Recently, I've been to Odessa, which is, by the way, one of the best cities in the world. There I learned about one extraordinary and outstanding woman. She was a lover of Polish-Belarusian national poet Adam Mickiewicz. Moreover, she was a lover of Russian national poet Alexander Pushkin. She used her charm to spy on them both for Russian Empire, despite her Polish origin. Today we are going to talk about adventurous but probably treacherous Countess Karolina Sobańska. Viennese Ball Karolina was the daughter of Polish nobleman Adam Rzewuski. The blood of the most notable Polish families ran through her veins. Her great-grandparents were Mikhail Kazimir Radzivil Rybenka and Franciszka Urszula Radzivil. Young Karolina spent most of her childhood and at her uncle's home in Vienna. Her uncle, Václav Rzewuski, was a famous explorer, adventurer and orientalist, so he spent a lot of time traveling around mysterious East and writing poems, music, philosophical works in French and in Polish. As you can guess, he was quite a personality of his time. Karolina's aunt Rosalia was a well-educated lady respected by the court. She hosted a popular salon in Vienna. Intellectuals of the time gathered in salons to discuss ideas, enjoy new art, literature and music, and certainly discuss politics. And since a charming hostess was at the heart of virtually every salon, the gathering were also seen as islands of proto-feminism, places where exceptional women could advance their private ambitions. Odessa in bloom 17-year-old Karolina was married off to Hieronym Sabinsky, rich landowner and businessman from Odessa, who was 33 years older than she. This marriage was meant to improve Karolina's family financial situation. Odessa was booming and blooming and hungry for entertainment. Karolina opened a salon similar to her aunt's. With her education, audacity and exquisitely charming manners, she made a hit. Her salon set the tone for Odessa's social scene. Despite giving birth to a baby girl, Carolina did not get on well with her elderly husband and eventually they separated. Soon, rumors spread she was having an affair with Jan David, a cavalry chief and Russian spy, who had Greek Polish and Lithuanian origins. David was sly and ambitious. So David was promoted and became a chief spy of the South. And he was meant to pursue any revolutionary activity of Polish and Russian organizations. Karolina and David were a scandalous couple because of their open involvement outside of marriage. Despite ostracism by the city's ladies, Karolina retained her power. She was brash, demonically beautiful and smart. She was an important figure in Odessian society. David was power-hungry but also generous to his mistress. He bought the best clothes for Karolina, paid for parties that were talked about all over Odessa. Karolina and David both loved the high life. Although I suspect David has some mummy issues when choosing Karolina. His mother, Sofia Patotska, was initially a Greek courtesan turned a Russian agent and later a Polish noblewoman. She was famous in Europe for her beauty and adventurous life. Alexander Pushkin Alexander Pushkin is considered by many to be the greatest Russian poet and the founder of modern Russian literature. Pushkin was exiled to Odessa for his mocking lyrics about Russian authorities. He fell for Karolina, describing his thing as intoxicating love, compulsive and torturing, calling her demonic beauty. Many sketches of Karolina's face can be found in Pushkin's notes. 
Pushkin dedicated a few short poems to Carolina. What means my name to you? Will you forgive me my jealous dreams? I loved you once. Her image also appears in the famous poems Boris Godunov, The Stone Guest and Eugene Onegin. In the same time, there were some talks that Carolina was an agent of the Tsar's secret service, but there are no supporting documents of her work there. Adam Miskevich Adam Miskevich was born near Navahrudok, which is now Belarus. He was born in the territory occupied by Russian Empire, the land of the former Grand Duchy of Lithuania, which had been part of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Miskevich was active in struggle to win independence for his home region. He is regarded as national poet in Belarus, Poland and Lithuania. He was a pioneer and the most influential writer of Polish Romanticism, comparable to Byron and Goethe. But back in 1825 Miskevich was in exile for his political activities. He arrived in Odessa. He couldn't resist Karolina's charm. He began to write erotic sonnets to her. Eventually Karolina invited him to travel around Crimea. David had gifted her a yacht named Carolina for a field trip. The company that went was quite ominous. David himself, Carolina's brother, who was an agent of the Tsar's secret service, and one of David's subordinates undercover. Miskevich was suspected of having connections with Polish rebel forces or could have been valuable as a bait. Despite the sinister outlook, that trip didn't bring any harm to Mitzkevich. Did Karolina help him? Did she double-cross him? We don't really know. Mitzkevich dedicated the famous Crimean sonnets book to Karolina. However, eventually she rejected Adam and for a long time he was very angry with her. Fall in Warsaw in Warsaw, the year 1830, an armed rebellion began against the Russian Empire. Large segments of people from Lithuania, Belarus and right bank Ukraine soon joined Poland in their fight. Although the insurgents achieved local successes, a numerically superior Imperial Russian army under Ivan Paskevich eventually crushed the uprising. Poland lost its autonomy and became an integral part of the Russian Empire. David distinguished himself in the suppression of the rebellion. Ivan Paskevich recommended David to the vice presidential position of the so called Warsaw Military District. Meanwhile, the Tsar's Secret Service received a report on Carolina. Poles have completely taken over the administration. Something like women's society was formed under the chairmanship of Sabinska, who has great power over Count David. Because of this, the main positions were given to the Poles, who participated in the rebellion. Sabinska tried to justify herself and write a long letter to the chief of Russian secret police, where she expressed her loyalty to the Russian monarchy and contempt for her homeland, Poland. The letter had no effect, and the answer from the Tsar Nicholas was harsh. How long Count Fit allowed himself to be fooled by this woman who seeks only her own Polish advantages under her personal devotion and is just as loyal a mistress as a Russian subject? It would be great to open the eyes of Count Witt and tell her to return to her estate in Padolia. Taking into account his own Polish origin, Count David had fallen from power in disgrace. Not long after, Karolina and David broke up. Was Karolina a traitor to Poland? I want to believe that she wasn't and she was secretly helping to Mitzkevich and rebels, but we'll never know for sure. And that being said, her father and both of her brothers were definitely 
loyal Russian servants. Ivan Paskevich himself was sure of Karolina's loyalty to Russian Empire. Midnight in Paris Now Karolina was in a very dark place in her life. After 15 years together they had broken up with David and her only daughter died. She had no place in Poland nor in Russia. In despair she married a promising subordinate of David, but he fell short of her expectation and she wasn't able to achieve career success. In 1847 he died. She decided to go to France to visit her sister, who was, by the way, married to Honoré de Balzac. Balzac didn't like Carolina, calling her sly and eccentric. Despite cold showers from him and Polish immigrants, Carolina was still able to charm the public. She gained entrance into writer circles. At 55 years old, she captivated the attention of popular French critic Charles Saint-Beuve, but then preferred the rising star of French poetry, Jules Lacroix. Ironically, Carolina, who was adored by the genius poets of her time, chose the guy who doesn't even have a page on Wikipedia. No, the rising star didn't rise to the occasion. Fate has its own sense of humor, apparently. Fortunately, it looks like Carolina was happy with her marriage to Lacroix. Her husband was 14 years younger and adored her. Lacroix still wrote love sonnets for Carolina when she was 80. Sadly, Jules went blind and Carolina had to take care of him for 13 years. At the end of her life, Carolina wrote her husband a letter, which she ordered to be opened after her death. It contains the following words. With you, I was the happiest of women. You were my love, my happiness, my life. But death will not part us. I will die adoring you, blessing you. Take care of yourself for the love of me. This letter was written by 90-year-old lady. Karolina Sabanska died at 93 years old, and her beloved husband died two years later. Tak mile grucha szczebioce i kwili, że nie chcąc słówka żadnego postradać, nie śmiem przerywać, nie śmiem, nie śmiem odpowiadać. I tylko chciałbym słuchać, 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 i tylko chciałbym słuchać, słuchać. Słuchać, lecz mowy żywość, gdy oczki zapali i pocznie mocniej jagody różować, perowe ząbki błysną śród korali. Ach, ach w ten czas, ach w ten czas, w ten czas śmielej w oczęta, w oczęta poglądam, usta pomykam i słuchać nie żądam. Tylko całować, 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 całować. całować.